occupancy classification. This is an area where I think it's going to make a big difference. Uh, Chicago today speaks a very different language. Um, many of us are used to it, uh, but I think there's a little bit more logic and a little more user friendliness to the IBC's classification system. So in the chapter, um, pretty simple organization, starts out with some general provisions, uh, then some provisions about how you classify things. The specific provisions for A through U are in section 303 to 311, um, and then the miscellaneous leftover occupancies are at the end in section 312. Again, um, the IBC classifications are largely being adopted. There are two Chicago specific, two or three Chicago specific changes. Um, one to highlight is that child daycare centers will be a group E2. So the daycare centers that are classified as schools today, uh, group C3, are going to move to a new group E2 to carve them out from all other school occupancies. Um, because Chicago is not adopting a, a separate residential code, like the I-Code family has, similar to New York City, um, to have special rules, usually uh, relaxed rules or more generous rules for those small residential buildings, one to three units, so our single family homes, two flats and three flats. We have created a new subgroup, subcategory uh, called R5, and that's the one to three unit non-transient -res non residential buildings up to four stories. And then for making the distinction between low hazard, both factory and storage occupancies, the model code and our code today relies on sort of certain quantities of combustible packaging being present. Often in, in most processes today we see there is some amount of combustible packaging, so very few things actually qualify for being low hazard and most cla quali uh, are classified as a moderate hazard. So that will be the rule going forward if you want to prove up that you are your project is entitled for low hazard classification. You'll have to go meet with the Chicago Fire Department and get their written approval of the operational plan uh, to really say that it is something like a rock crushing facility where there aren't going to be combustible materials involved. Uh, and then I previously mentioned telecommunication equipment area is going to replace the Chicago term of technology center, be a little more narrowly defined, and it can either be a, a business occupancy if it's going to be regularly occupied or, or accessory to an office space, or it can be a storage occupancy if it's only going to have incidental human occupancy. Group R5, here's just an illustration again about this important category, uh, which especially if you're doing small residential projects is important to learn. Uh, it can be single family homes, two flats, three flats. It can be townhouses up to three together, and you can connect them and, and break that with a firewall so you can have continuous uh, R5. Associated private garages are going to fall in that same category, whether they're attached or detached, and there is a four-story maximum on that classification. Um, chapter four, very detailed chapter. Uh, we're going to skim over a few provisions of it right now. Um, the scope saying that if you fall into any of the special categories defined in chapter four, you have to follow the special provisions of chapter four. I'm going to cover a few highlights so high-rise buildings, uh, that's an important chapter and it's really a hybrid of IBC things and Chicago things that we've been doing for a long time. Uh, atrium provisions, um, that is amended again for Chicago to be more consistent with some things that we've been doing for a while. Motor vehicle related occupancies, so that's your everything from your private garages with single family homes up to your larger parking garages and parking facilities. And then there are some special provisions about dwelling units and sleeping units uh, in occupancies that have those residential living occupancy, uh, living conditions. Um, then at the bottom of the slide, there's a list of other things that you can find in this chapter uh, if you work on those specialized types of projects. High-rise buildings. Uh, so a high-rise building is going to continue to be defined as a building that's greater than 80 feet in building height. So it's not the IBC definition of figuring out the lowest level of fire department vehicle access and the highest occupied floor with an occupant load. It's going to be at the simpler way of measuring that we've done for a long time in Chicago. Um, the two source water supply, as today, is going to continue to be re required at 300 feet. Um, and then there's some additional structural and operational integrity requirements that come in when you get to 400 feet. So uh, shaft ratings, uh, structural requirements, uh, diesel generator required as today, uh, and some enhanced requirements for spray and fireproofing 
happen at 400 feet. Um, most high-rise buildings, again, when we talked about the definition of building measurement is changing a little bit. Most buildings are going to be the same height. A high-rise building that has a pitched roof, like the Newberry Library, uh, with that very big pitched roof, which is a high-rise building today, might, if remeasured under the new definition, no longer be a high-rise building, because now it's going to be measured to the midpoint of that pitched roof instead of the highest point. Uh, for motor vehicle-related occupancies, uh, it's going to be the small ones, the private garages and carports. Those requirements are pretty similar to what we adopted in 2017. I think we anticipated that some of this was coming along the way when we did that ordinance a few years ago. Uh, public parking garages are going to be uh, very differently defined than IBC does because IBC has some concepts that we didn't adopt in the parking area, including podium-type buildings, uh, restrictions on motor fuel dispensing facilities can't be inside of a building, and some other limitations there. Repair garages, similar, higher hazard when you are doing repair work on vehicles and have hazardous chemicals or other things going on. And then the Chicago-specific category of parking facilities, which is sort of a freestanding building, maybe with limited ground floor uh, retail or other occupancies, but primarily a parking occupancy, uh, remains as a Chicago-specific category. For Chapter 5, this is building height and area. So the key thing to think about here, this is an area where I think people have urged change for a while, and, and there is some change, but it's really halfway between where we are today and where the model code would be in other places. So uh, again, navigating the chapter, it, it goes through and walks through with those provisions, the height and area tables at the beginning, and then some specific things about mezzanines, building area, uh, mixed occupancy and incidental uses later on. Um, in the mezzanine provision, as I said, it, it keeps the Chicago limitation of 20% generally on mezzanines. Um, for mixed use and occupancy, it is going to get into recognizing unseparated mixed uses for the first time and provide some clearer guidance on when you do have separated mixed uses going on in a building, uh, which is a very popular thing to do today, and we spend a lot of time uh, interpreting and walking people through sort of compromises to make our current code work in that area. Um, and we're going to have uh, clearer requirements for separations of incidental uses. I think that's an area that is spelled out in our code today. Uh, some of them are all in one place, and then there's some few other, a few other scattered ones, so this is pulling them all together in one place. Um, some Chicago-specific differences, so for buildings that are going to continue not to have a sprinkler system, and there's going to be lots more sprinkler systems required under this code, but for buildings that continue not to have them, and there's plenty where that's an option, the height and areas are really going to be very similar to what the current code allows. Um, but when you do add a sprinkler system, there's going to be a bigger bonus than the current code allows today. So you are going to get larger buildings of less fire-resistive construction types allowed, um, there is going to be the, the frontage increase provision in the model code is less generous than the current code for frontage, uh, but again, there is the more generous bonus for sprinkler systems. And Chicago is going to, of course, allow you to build a podium type building where the first level is uh, a more fire resistive construction type with less fire resistive construction above, but there's not going to be any credit for that like in the IBC. So there really isn't going to be a concept of building a wood frame building starting two or three stories off the ground. Um, here's an example uh, illustration. I think it's a good illustration. The old code really limited uh, protected frame construction, old code 4A, new code 5A construction type to a three unit, three story residential building. And you really couldn't get mixed occupancies in there. You couldn't do other things. Uh, the new code is going to be a little more generous. It's going to, with a sprinkler system, you can get up to a, a fairly good size four story mixed use uh, with a sprinkler system. Uh, non-residential uses on lower floors, whether that's mercantile, business, uh, parking. Uh, it may require far retardant treated wood for the exterior walls, depending on the distance to the property line. That's a Chicago amendment that we'll get to a little later on. Uh, in types of construction, so again, this is moving towards speaking the national language, so we don't have the confusion that we have today about what is uh, type 3C construction, what is type 1C construction, I've never heard of that. We get that a lot from, from people other places, uh, so we are moving to speaking the same language as the rest of the country on construction type classification with a few minor Chicago differences, but much more minor than today. 
Um, so here's a chart that roughly shows the correspondence between our current classifications and the new classifications. Uh, starting at the top, really R1A is very, very strict in terms of fire resistance. It goes a little overboard, I think, uh, compared to other standards out there and the latest in fire science. So the R1A today is a little bit less than IBC1A, so that's why that arrow is falling somewhere in the middle between IBC1A and 1B. 1B is, is roughly the same between the two codes. Um, Chicago 1C is now 2A. Uh, Chicago 2 is 2B. Uh, and then the threes, there's some switching around there because 3A Chicago becomes type 4 heavy timber. Um, and at the bottom of the chart, IBC type 5B, sort of unprotected frame construction, uh, whatever material you want and no fire resistance rating, um, really doesn't have an equivalent except with some exceptions in Chicago. So that's why that's a dashed line down there at the bottom of the slide. Um, ag again, we talked about type 1A is really becoming less. And throughout the code, really, other than for firewalls and hazardous occupancies, the idea of four hour construction uh, is going away. So it still stays for hazardous construction, for hazardous occupancies for containing that, and for firewalls. Uh, but in other areas, we're really going max out at three hours of fire resistance required, consistent with what people are testing out there and what products are available. The exterior wall, uh, new from IBC, is going to be based on fire separation distance instead of inherently based on the construction type. Uh, it's still going to have to rely on the construction type if the exterior walls are load bearing, um, but that is going to be a change um, from what we're used to doing today. And then there is a clearer list of co permitted combustible materials in non-combustible construction and also a recognition that that same list applies to the exterior walls of type three and four construction. Um, Chicago specific things we did to mitigate between the transition between our code today and the new code, uh, recognizing that we've long recognized a 30 minute roof construction in residential buildings um, that will continue to be recognized for residential buildings up to four stories, uh, less, less restricted than the IBC in that area. Um, table 602, that's the uh, fire separation distance based ratings is modified a little bit for urban conditions. So there's some conditions where you can be a little bit closer um, and less restrictive, uh, consistent with our code today. Chicago doesn't require, it will not in the new code recognize fire retardant treated wood in exterior walls of type three and four construction. So in non-combustible exterior walls, uh, we're not going to recognize fire retardant treated wood in those in the same way that the IBC would. That's the biggest difference, I think, in this chapter. Um, but Chicago will recognize fire retardant treated wood in frame construction, allowing you to build frame construction closer to lot line than we've ever allowed it before. Uh, so you will be allowed to be up to the lot line, closer than three feet to the lot line. Uh, if that exterior wall of your type five building is built with fire retardant treated wood framing and then a exterior cladding that's a non-combustible material. So that's note J in table 602 if you want to read more about that, which I think is an exciting change for a lot of people. 